Welcome back to the Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk about Trent Simpson. Trent Simpson was our third round pick out of Clemson. People say he's the eventual replacement for Pat Queen. Let's see. Roll the intro. All right, let's look at this Trenton Simpson film. But before we do, hit the like button. If you like this content, hit the subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the rest of the off season. We got mini camps coming up. We got different film sessions that are, will be dropping. So make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified when they drop and you can come in and enjoy this fire, fire, fire content. But now let's get into Trent Simpson. This is, uh, to me, a polarizing pick. We didn't have a second round pick and the glaring needs on the Ravens defense was cornerback. Uh, we chose to go linebacker with our second pick, which was in the third round. Simpson was a third round pick. And um, some people say he's all that. You know, some people say he's Queen's replacement. You know, but I'm going to give you the results of my my film watching. And for those of you that were with me in the Patreon, you kind of have an idea of where I'm going with this. But let's start off. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I pulled seven plays. Can't win versus the guard center guard. Like, if you're this quick, you run the 4-4, four, four, you got to be able to out quick these people in the middle of the line, middle of the offensive line. Guard center guard, they can't get their hands on you. You can't just run straight at them. You have to defeat them with your, your quickness. And you basically just ran right down the middle of that guard. There's no counter move to get off of it. And at that point, he just lost the rep. And there, there are plenty, you know, and this is BC. I was saying this a lot during the film watching. This is BC. And we know from watching Zay Flowers, this O-line is not very good. We know from watching Zay Flowers tape that this O-line is not very good. You went right down the middle of the guy. He got his hands on you. And you made it easy for him. You got to use your speed on the interior. And there's not a lot of evidence of him using his speed when he blitz or when he's lined up head up over the guard. Or center. Let's go to the next one. Uh, good job of reading the guard and filling the gaps. So you see him right there. See that guard pulling? Watch as he starts to slide to his left into the open gap. And he's going to close the space. So by the time the ball carrier gets there, there's not a lot of space to maneuver. He basically you know, jumbles up the the play toward the line of scrimmage because because he sees the guard coming. He scrapes over the top, which he's already on that side anyway, and comes down here afterwards. Because honestly, in this scheme right here, the guy that's supposed to block him is this guy. That's supposed to block him. But when he cheats over and you're going to see it, he's going to end up right in this gap. See a guard coming, he slides right over, right in that open gap, and he attacks it at the line of scrimmage. So now there's, I mean, there's a gap there, but not much because he closed it up. And you got somebody winning from this side. So, but if he stayed back here and got blocked back here, this this hole is is about that wide open if he stayed back there. So that's a good job of, you know, seeing the guard, reading the pull, and getting over the top of it. So that's, that's a positive for him, you know, from me. But again, you don't see that much on the film. I just wanted to show it because even though it was a positive, it still wasn't textbook. Next play. Closing speed. This is where he excels at. Get him in space and he do his thing. Not very good on the blitz, but the quarterback has no chance of getting away from him. Zero chance. And not just quarterbacks. He chases down running backs, chases down receivers on screens. Get him in space, he can go. That's, that's where he... He he get him in space, let him do his thing. That's I'm just all I'm saying. Just if he can play, we'll talk about it later. Closing speed is good. Now versus Notre Dame in the middle. Zone coverage. Uh, he, he bit on the play fake, saw it wasn't run, got his head to the, the strong side of the receiving formation. And this is the strong side of receiving formation because there's three receivers on that side. To his left, offensive right. That's why it's the strong the strong receiving side. Bit on the play fake. Well, it wasn't even play fake. So that's part of the problem right there. That's a straight drop back. I didn't see that at first. There's no play fake involved. 
That's a straight drop back. Why are you jumping in there? So that's bad reads. That's a bad read right there. He's going full speed. And obviously he got some kind of uh, pass coverage because he drops up out of there. So that's, that's and early, if you watch the Patreon, you saw me complain about his hop steps. This is even worse. Just running to the line of scrimmage. Like, just running to the line of scrimmage. There's not a play fake there. This is a straight drop back. But he recovers. But he recovers. He gets his eyes over there. Sees, the, you know, he got a wall off whatever's coming through. And watch him get up under and just stay with the guy. Just stay up under it. And just stay with him. He, he's pretty darn good in his own coverage. Pretty darn good in his own coverage. But that, that run read, that was trash. And I didn't even notice that before just now. Next up. No o, none old linemen can't block him. Look how he got rid of the tight end right there. Receivers, tight ends, don't block him. There was a play in this game where he just straight up just took Meyer, the, the good tight end from um, Notre Dame, and just basically shook him like a rag doll. What I didn't put it on there, but he basically – he, he popped his head up, popped him again, and then popped his neck back one more time. I was surprised Maya didn't have whiplash. But again, none tight ends. None tight ends don't block him. Don't block him at all. This play, should, that second player right there shouldn't have been on there. I was rambling too much. But watch what he does to 88. Now, what I will say, and I forgot to mention, I forgot to put this in here. When he takes on blocks, this is part of the problem. Even when he takes on blocks in the line of scrimmage. See how he allows... The tight end to kind of cover him up. Where my, where my cursor at? So how he allows the tight end to kind of cover him up. He never really takes the block on half man. Like he always takes him on, you know, head helmet to helmet. He never really takes it with his helmet on this side right here or his helmet on this side. He always goes right down the middle of a guy and that allows him, especially the old lineman, to cover him up. There are a few instances that we saw on film yesterday where he did take him. You know, take like half man and he made plays. But a lot of times he run into that O line and the O line would just cover him up because he wasn't taking him on half, you know, half man. He go number to number. Instead of, you know, outside number to outside number. Or inside number to inside number. So you gotta get better at, you know, taking blocks on with half his body and not letting the O lineman cover him up. But right here he's just stronger than eighty eight. Popped his head back, got him out the way, go chase it down. And again, that closing speed is, is crazy. Now, versus North Carolina. This is where I think he's best at, on the edge, doing stuff like that. Watch him play through the tight end and then go make the tackle. And you'll see it on the back end view. He's just going to play through the block of the tight end of 81. And then he see the ball coming and just runs it down. He's able to use his speed and power to get in the backfield. And he made multiple plays like this. Like, plays like this are littered all over the film. From the, from this standpoint, from the edge of the edge of the uh, defense, they're littered littered in those four games we watched all over. He make a ton of plays from the edge. Got one more coming off the edge again. He's able to adapt sometimes. His pass rush is not the greatest, but he's able to adapt. He get, he's blocking by the tackle. He can't get past the tackle. Sees the ball coming, jumps up, batted down. I think I saw about three or four batted balls. Uh, he he knocked down. Or knocked up, rather. One was on the stunt. That one right there, and a, and a couple of more. But let's get to the, you know, my two cents on it. So see where his spot shot are right there. Now that's not him. He's in the middle right here. But we just talking about space. His best position is right there on the edge of the defense, playing our edge spot. So that's why I don't. That's why. I, when people say he's a threat to Queen, I don't think so. I think he's more of a threat to Oway. Because his best position, to me, is playing. He's good playing right there. Playing on the edge of the, of the defense, he's good. He can drop He can drop out and cover a uh, running back if they come out. He can drop into regular coverage if it's like, you know, if they're rushing three and dropping eight. He can do a lot of different stuff from that position right there, which I think is his best position. His second best position is off the ball and in space. Kind of like an alley player. He's good at coverage. He's good at zone drops. He's uh, He's okay at man. But zone dropping and walling and finding guys, he's good. There was even one play where uh, I can't remember what team it was. They ran four verticals and the, out of trips, and he walled the number three guy who had the opposite vertical all the way down the field in perfect position. Perfect position. So him at the line of scrimmage or him in space like there, his best position, his worst spot is where he spot shadowed right there. That's where he's worse at. 
he can't get off blocks from from O lineman. Uh, when he blitz, he he rarely gets through. Uh, when O lineman get their hands on him, they don't get they don't he doesn't get them off, and he don't take on blocks with half his body. He he allows O lineman to cover him up. So I really think his best position is is at edge or out there in space, and that's why I don't think he's a threat to Queen. Even though I know Queen didn't get his uh, fifth year option picked up, I don't think he's a threat to any middle linebacker unless they just develop him and say, hey, we're going to put you in this one spot and you do this. But he's extremely versatile to do other things. He can, he can play Chuck's role. He can play Kyle Hamilton's role. He could do a bunch of other things. He could drop down on third downs and be an edge guy. So with that being said, I don't think he's a threat to either linebacker. And obviously, not a threat to Roquan. I don't think he's a threat to Queen unless they just do something funky. Um, but he's a versatile athlete that can play in space or on the edge of your defense. I just don't think he's a middle linebacker. He could be, could turn out to be one because of his size and his speed. But right now, I just don't think he 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 is one. And what I also forgot to mention on the um, on the live stream today, kind of because we didn't get to it, we got thrown off talking about Dante Demas. I want to talk about the missed tackle rate for Queen since we talking about Queen. It went down every year. His rookie year's missed tackle rate was eighteen three. Sophomore year, 17-5. Last year, 13-5. So, just so you know, his, his missed tackle rate steady going down. And uh, Mr. Simpson right here misses a boatload of tackles. You just, just know that. Go back and watch the full games. He misses tackles. But not because of effort. But not because of effort. Because he's going too fast and he don't break down. Uh, same problem that somebody else had. But this is what I got for you. This is my two cents on, on Trent Simpson. This is our third round pick out of um, Clemson. Again, I think he's a, he'll be a good at edge. I think he'll be good in space. I just don't think he'll be good at, at any one of those interior linebacker positions. Uh, put it in the comments whether you agree with me, whether you disagree with me, and let me know what you think about uh, Mr. Simpson. And again, if this is your first time here, and if it's not your first time here, like the video. If you've not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And when you do, hit that bell so you can be notified when these videos drop throughout the rest of the 2023 offseason. And again, I appreciate you guys for coming through. If you want to support the channel, you can do that three ways. That's Cash App, PayPal, that's Patreon. And if you get the, if you do do the Patreon, you'll be able to get in the Fantasy Football League. You'll be able to get into the Discord. And depending on which level you get, you'll be able to get other prizes that go along with that also. So I thank you for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. I appreciate you, and I'll see you soon, man. Peace. Caillou Blue coming up next. Caillou Blue Kelly.